So, let's just take you through this clinical scenario. Here's a patient that requires tooth number nine removed. As you can obviously see, there's a fistula, there's a demitis tissue, there's inflammation, and there is a hopeless tooth. And so we proceed to remove it, and <clears throat> not that you need to see how I extract the tooth, but the key here is identifying the, the osseous defect and determining how to place that implant. Because this patient is demanding, especially with the front tooth, that they leave your office with a tooth replaced. So how can you do that? You can do it with a flipper or a mucoadhesion prosthesis or a bonded bridge or you can load that implant. But if you're planning to load that implant, how do you determine if that implant is sufficiently stable to support the prosthesis? So as you can see, we tried to perform atraumatic extraction with all of our cases. Sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's not. For me to immediately place the implant, I must maintain that solid bone that we find on the palatal aspect of the socket. It doesn't matter what happens on the labial aspect as far as implant stability is concerned. It does matter as far as soft tissue. But for me, primary stability is the key. And this is how I determine that. By placing the preparation site more to the palate, we're able then to engage that nice dense bone on the palatal side. And as you can see, the twist drill is struggling to get a, a apposition of that drill onto the bone because there is actually no labial bone whatsoever as you saw with the uh, pocket measurements. And so the key for me is to establish the proper uh, shape and form in the preparation of the bone. Once I have done that, and the key that I look for is whether that drill stays in that site or not. If that drill comes out, then we, don't, or we will uh, have a very difficult time gaining initial stability. But if we can establish that, um, that resistance with the twist drill, uh, then I for sure uh, can gain some stability. Now we also perform soft tissue grafting especially in these um, um, major defects that we are seeing. So this patient would be considered a high-risk patient because if you're going with extraction and immediate implant placement with no labial bone, what do you expect from the soft tissues? It's going to shrink on you. So we naturally want to augment that site. And now we're filling the gap as far as the uh, defect is concerned on the labial. Do we expect that to, to help us with the primary stability? No. What we're expecting is that graft material to help us with the reconstruction of the lost labial plate. Now we complete our packing of the graft material and we insert our implant very, very carefully. Now, at this point, what do you think the insertion torque will be? we can probably achieve 20, 25 in Newton centimeters. Now, what does 25 Newton centimeters tell you? Is it ready to take immediate loading? And this is what I mean, that they do not have a reliable scale to help you determine whether it's necessary uh, to wait or not. So here you can see we have a measurement of 73 over 78. And many of you criticize, well, how come I'm getting two numbers? Well, you have to realize that ISQ measurements is a, um, a summation of all the various measurements taking and taken in a 360 degree uh, value. And so you're going to see different measurements, but it's an average. And so with that high of an ISQ number, I can assure myself that we can go ahead and provide this patient with immediate provisionalization. Now note that with the placement of this uh, permanent abutment, you don't want to over-torque 
this um, abutment screw. And so I provide resistance with my caliper, as you can see above. That allows me to prevent over-torquing and maybe loosening that implant when I'm tightening the yeah. abutment screw. And so at this time, uh, we hand our patient over to our uh, PROS colleague to fabricate the provisional. Now, in this phase of treatment, we want to make sure that we minimize the removal and reinsertion of the abutment. And the reason why is because, remember, that implant that we just placed has only mechanical stability. And as you all know, if you've inserted a screw into a piece of wood, the more times you back that screw out, the looser it becomes. And so the key is not to allow the uh, restorative events that are taking place right now to loosen that abutment. That is the reason why I torque that abutment screw down first and leave it at that. This concept really helps us to deliver the one abutment, one time uh, principle, where we can deliver the definitive prosthesis, allow our soft tissues to mold around that uh, the abutment, and allow us to um, provide the patient with adequate soft tissue contours. And so you see here we're cementing the uh, provisional restoration in place, taking care to, to avoid excess cement. You can see the position of the implant. It's ideal. This is at six months post-implant placement. And you can see the soft tissue. Now, with the immediate load implant, I wait six months because there's no rush at this point. There's no need to go back in two months to take an ISQ value. And so we go back at six months, and guess what? This will tell you. You see that we reach an ISQ value of 83, 84, 85. And so this tells me that that implant indeed has integrated, even though we immediately provisionalize and immediately load that implant in this very high-risk patient. So the value of using the ISQ with initial and with um, the definitive restorations is the key.